The structure block can be a powerful new tool, but you have to know how to use it. This is a creative mode only block, but it can be activated with redstone, so it does still have some uses in survival mode. Just like a command block, when you right click it, it shows a menu, so does a structure block. This may look confusing at first, and to make matters worse, there are actually three different menus, the load, corner, and save menus, that can be cycled between with this mode button at the bottom left of the menu. At the top of each menu is the structure name. It has to be in a two-part format with a colon in between. These two parts represent the folder that your structure is going to be saved in and then the name of the file of that structure. If you do not specify a folder and you exit out of the structure block and come back, it will automatically default to a Minecraft folder. But if we do designate a folder name, it will keep it the same. The name also stays the same when you change modes in a structure block. So if I wanted to load one of these chain links, all I need to do is enter the name of the folder and file of the structure and then click done. It will prepare the area first, so then we go back in, click load a second time, and it will be loaded into the world. Next, let's talk about the relative position. These three boxes determines where the actual structure gets loaded into the world. In this order, they represent the X, the Y, and the Z axis. The bounding box will always have a corner with colored lines. This corner is called the origin, and each color represents a different coordinate axis. So red for X, green for Y, blue for Z. So let's use this model to show which direction our bounding box is facing. In Java Edition, the furthest that you can move a structure is 48 blocks. That structure is now 48 blocks away from the structure block. These also take negative numbers, so I can place this behind me as well over there. As you can see, it has quite the possible range. Structure blocks have a pretty useful feature. Down here at the bottom row, you see a whole bunch of numbers and this line. Each of these numbers determines the rotation angle of the structure that you load in. One thing to remember is that it rotates around the block and not the corner. So each time that we change the angle of the rotation, see how it's continuing to keep the block inside that bounding box. So let's actually load these in so we can see how they actually end up looking. So as you can see, the green blocks stay in the same place, but the rest of the structure rotates clockwise around it. Of course, let's not forget about the button that is right here in the middle. So first I'm going to load in the regular structure, then Let's click this once, and what we'll see happen is that it is mirrored over the red axis. And then we do this again over here, but we click this twice. Now it is mirrored over the blue axis. The next structure block feature is pretty interesting. Down here at the structure integrity and seed blocks, you can see that we have some numbers. Uh, the structural integrity will be anywhere from 1 to 0, and the seed can be any number of different characters. When the structural integrity is 1, absolutely nothing will be changed about the structure. So this is just a 3x3x3 three by three by three block of white wool, but if I change the structural integrity down to 0, absolutely nothing happens. And if we make this half as much, then only half of the blocks are actually placed. And this is random. They're not the same blocks every time. So as I cycle through this, you can see that it is different. Now the seed block is 
basically a way that you can kind of control the randomness of which blocks are placed. I don't know that there's much of a rhyme or reason to this, but I guess it gives you a different option for how it looks. Last but not least, the load block has the ability to turn off the bounding box, and it has this useful little button, include entities. Now what is this? Well, I can demonstrate this by spawning in a villager, and then let's throw the egg in there. In the save block, we also need to have include entities on, and we'll save it. And we load this over here. So now we have saved the entities that are within the bounding box and now we have loaded them in the exact same position. The size of a structure block is determined inside of a save block. In the structure size there are three boxes. These again represent the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So right now we only have a one by one by one cube. So it's just a single block that is being saved. And then over here we can load it in and it's just the one block. If I change the size to a two by two by two and save it, the load block will prepare the new sized area and then we can load in the two by two light gray cube. And again, three by three by three, save and load hit load again, and there it is. In Java, you can go all the way up to 48 blocks, which is quite a large area that you can end up saving. If you have a large or oddly shaped build that you want to save, but you don't want to have to try and find the structure size manually, structure blocks do have another mode. The third and last mode of a structure block that we've not looked at yet is the corner mode. All you have to do is make sure that the name for the corner mode matches the same name as your save block. Then you hit this button over here to the right that says detect and it will automatically calculate both the position and the structure size. If you don't want to put your save block right next to the build that you are saving, you can actually put two corner blocks and then your save block some distance away and then hit detect. Again, this corner block just has to match the name of the save block. Minecraft has some invisible blocks that you might want to use in creative mode. Save mode structure blocks have the unique ability with this button to the right to show those invisible blocks. So now any invisible block that is within the bounding box will be shown by these little colored cubes. All three types of air are shown by this little blue cube. The structure void, which I'll show you here in just a second, is shown by this kind of pinkish cube. Barrier blocks are red and light blocks are yellow. Structure voids ignore the blocks that this is placed in. So when we save this, it doesn't save these as any kind of block, not even air. So if I go over here and load it in, it doesn't change the blocks that we told it not to with the structure void. We can do the same thing with water and lava. Which, by the way, you can actually save liquids as well. This does include lava, as you can see here. And then, of course, if we get rid of the structure voids and save it, we are actually saving these blocks as air. So I can come back in here, and there we go. It completely gets rid of the black blocks. Well, that's it for the basics. Feel free to ask any clarifying questions in the comments because my channel is all about structure blocks. So make sure to subscribe for some more advanced tips in the future.